Hi, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited to be joining you today because this video kicks off my brand new Pandas Tips series. Now, whether you're a beginner and have never touched pandas before, or you're experienced and use pandas every day, this series is for you. Because I'm going to be starting with a bit of the basics and then I'll show you ways to level up your coding to make sure that you're getting the most out of this amazing Python library. There's so much that you can do with pandas, and most people that I know are really just scratching the surface of what pandas can do. So this series aims to show you all the ins and outs of your favorite pandas commands, as well as to introduce you to some new functions and methods that you probably haven't used before. All of that is happening right here on my channel, so be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Let's go ahead and get started by loading in some data with pandas read CSV function. By the way, you can follow along with all of the code I'm about to show you by visiting my GitHub page. Navigate to the pandas tips section, and there's also a data folder where you can find and download today's data set. So since pandas is an external library, you'll need to import it each time you're using Python or Jupyter Notebook. I'm going to go ahead and alias pandas as pd, which is the standard abbreviation to use for it. For completeness, I just wanted to let you know that the version I'm using for this video is 2.1.1, which was released in September 2023. So if you want to check out your pandas version, you can do that using pd dot underscore underscore version underscore underscore. Pandas does change every once in a while, so if you're seeing different results than I am, it could be because we're using different versions. Let's get started with the very basics of using read CSV through pandas. So the first thing you might want to do is read in a CSV file from your computer. I'm going to show you how to do that, but you do need to understand a little bit about file structures here. So I'm going to be assuming that your file lives within the same directory as your Jupyter Notebook. And by the way, the command I'm executing here, exclamation point ls, the exclamation point tells Jupyter Notebook to execute a bash command. And the ls just says that I want to list out all the files in my current working directory. In this directory, you'll see that I have the notebook that I'm currently working on, read underscore CSV, as well as a customers.csv file. Now, this is the file that contains the data that we're going to load in. I also have this dataset gen.py, and that's the Python file I used to create this dataset. And that file was created by ChatGPT. If you'd like to see a video about how I did that, just let me know in the comments below. But assuming you've got all that set up, let's say that you're going to create a new variable called df, which is short for data frame, and you're going to read in a CSV file. You'll reference pandas, type read underscore CSV, and then just provide the name of that file that you want to read in. I'm going to be reading in the customers.csv file. Okay, so it looks like nothing happened, and that's because my CSV file was read in and stored under the df variable. So to take a look at that, I'm going to write df.head, which is just a pandas method for taking a look at the first part of your data frame. Here you can see the first five rows that we've read in, and I've got various different columns about different individuals. So I've got an ID column, their first and last name, a phone number, and a lifetime value for that customer. And these are all fictitious phone numbers, names, and lifetime values. And by the way, all the data I'm showing you here is available on my GitHub page. I'll put a link to that down below. But the big thing to notice here is just that this file does live in the same directory or folder as my Jupyter Notebook. If the file was somewhere else on your computer, you would need to specify that within the string they're providing to read CSV. For example, if I had another folder within this folder called data, I might do something like data forward slash customers.csv. I just need to be able to tell pandas where that file is uh, within my computer. Another really cool thing that you can do is actually read a CSV file in from a URL. So I promised you you'd have access to this file and I'm going to show you where you can find it right now. If you head over to my GitHub page, uh, my repo dedicated toward these videos, you can scroll down to the pandas tips section. And within this pandas tips folder, I'm gonna have a folder called data. Looking in there, there are a few different files in here already. There might be a few more by the time you go looking for this file, uh, but this customers.csv is right here. You can go ahead and download it if you'd like by clicking the download button, or you can directly read this data in from GitHub by using the URL. So go ahead and click on this raw button. 
that's going to take you to this data, which is just comma separated values. And one thing you would notice here is that this URL does start with the word raw. There's a couple other ways to do this, but um, make sure that that URL either has raw at the beginning or at the end of the link. Otherwise, it's not going to read in properly. But go ahead and copy this link. And we're going to go back over to the notebook and supply this directly to read underscore CSV. All right, so you have that link copied. Let's go ahead and create a new variable called df underscore URL. And here I'm going to once again reference the read CSV function. But now instead of providing a string where Python can find my file, what I'm going to do is provide a string that is the URL I just copied. So it's coming from GitHub, it starts with the word raw. And this directs Jupyter Notebook to go grab that CSV information from the internet. We can once again go ahead and reference now df underscore URL and take a look at the head or the first five rows of this data frame. It's the same information that I just showed you before, some fictitious customer data with fictitious phone numbers and lifetime values. So that's pretty great. The read CSV function can go ahead and pull information from your computer or from the internet using a URL. Think you've got the basics down? Good, because it's time to level up with these amazing options. These arguments are going to make your data cleaning life a whole lot simpler because you'll be able to shape up your data as you read it into pandas instead of doing a whole lot of data cleaning steps later on. Let's check it out. So one thing you may know about this data, we have various different columns here and the very first column is called ID. Now we can assume, and I'll tell you this is true, this is how I made the data set, um, that ID is a unique identifier for each customer. So when you load in data to pandas, it will automatically provide you with a unique identifier over here on the far left. So it starts with zero and one and two, et cetera. So it will provide you with that unique identifier. But if you have your own unique identifier that you'd like to use to label each of the rows, you can specify that when you read the information in from a CSV. So let's go ahead and try it. Here's my same read CSV and I'm reading in that customer's file, but you could have the URL here if you'd like. Let's go ahead and use this property called index underscore call. And what this will do is just say, hey pandas, I have a particular column in this CSV file that I would like to use as my index numbers instead of having you create an index number for me. So in this case, that column is called ID. Let's go ahead and execute that and take a look at the first part here you'll see that the ID column has now been treated as the index column. And you'll no longer have pandas generic index numbers, but you'll have your own ID numbers there instead. That can be very useful if you have your own ID numbers that you'd like to use to label each of the rows. The next thing that we have to talk about is missing values. So this happens all the time that they're going to be missing data in your data sets. One thing you can do with pandas is check this info method on your data frame. Now this will tell you the usual things here, how many um, rows you have. There are a thousand different rows here. Um, we have various different index numbers, um, how many missing values and what kind of data types I have. So this can be very useful. On the other hand, this can sometimes be a little bit misleading and let me show you why. So right here it says that in my phone column, I have 968 non-null values. But let's take a look at what those values happen to be. So in my data frame, I'm going to pull up the phone column and do value counts. This is a great method here that just tells me how many times it sees each value in that column. So there's lots of unique phone numbers here, which is what we expect, but take a look at this. There are 31 question marks in that column. Now, um, using my logical brain here, I think question mark probably means that's a missing value that I don't know the phone number for this customer. And that should really be treated like a missing data point instead of an actual phone number. And the same thing's actually going to happen with the lifetime value column. Let's go ahead and take a look at that one. I also have several different um, question marks in that column as well. So I have actually more missing values than I think I have based on just dot info. Let's take a look at how we can use read CSV to account for those question marks. If I have known missing values, like in this case, I have the question mark, I can actually tell pandas to treat that as an NA value on reading that data in. Now I know a lot of people who spend a whole lot of time trying to clean data after it's been read in in pandas, but this read CSV function is so powerful 
that you can actually take care of a lot of these things just as you're reading this information in. And you don't need to go through and do replace and all these sort of things. If you know there are known issues with your data set, like question marks, you can specify that as you're reading that information in and save you a lot of time later. So the way that we're going to do that is with this extra property called na underscore values. And we can pass in a whole list of different values that represent missing values. Or in this case, we just have one string, which is the question mark. This signals to pandas that anytime you see just a question mark by itself, um, you should treat that as a missing value. Now you could still have uh, questions written in other places. Uh, you could have question marks in combination with other characters, but it just if we see a cell that just has a question mark, you should treat that as a missing value. Now here's the data, it looks about the same. Let's take a look at dot info. There are many more uh, non-null, or many fewer non-null values than I thought I had, and that means many more missing values. But if I take a look at this value counts now, you'll see that the question marks have been treated as missing values and are not listed as phone numbers here. And the final thing I wanted to show you about read underscore CSV is how you can limit the number of rows that are read in. So right now we have a thousand by four data frame. So 1000 rows and four columns. And if I take a look at the very end of this data frame, so dot head will give you the first five, dot tail will give you the last five. This data frame currently ends with Henry Brown. Now, one thing that could happen is, let's say that you had a really, really big data set with like millions of different rows, and you're trying to do some cleaning strategies and modeling and so on. Maybe it would help just to read in a portion of that data, work on all of your um, you know, code that you're gonna use, Make sure that you've got that down pat before you waste a lot of time working on the full data frame. And then you could go back and, and pull in all of the data after you've got your process and your pipeline nailed down. So one thing you could do as you're reading in the CSV, if you wanna save a little bit of time and just work with a smaller amount of data first, you can actually use this property called in rows and it specify exactly how many rows you'd like pandas to read in. So instead of all thousand rows, let's say that we just want 100 rows for now. So if I read this data in, take a look at the shape. I only have 100 rows instead of all thousand. And then finally, take a look at the bottom part of that data frame. Now we end with Joseph Mitchell instead of Henry Brown. So like I said, this can be just really useful if you have really large data sets. And instead of you know combing through those millions and millions of different rows and trying to work through all of your uh, process and pipeline on that really large amount of data, you could just pull in like, let's say 100 rows, see what you have, develop your strategies. And then once you've nailed everything down for your pipeline, you can scale back up to the, the full data set whenever you're ready. Thanks for joining me today to learn all about read CSV. I hope you've got some new tips and tricks to try the next time you use that function. And if there's any other pandas methods or function that you're curious about, let me know about them in the comment section below. If you're new to pandas or you're looking to level up your skills, there are lots of great books out there that you can learn from. I've gathered up a few of my favorites and put those in my Amazon storefront, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. I do receive a small commission from your purchases at no additional cost to you. So thanks so much for supporting this channel, and I'll see you in the next one.